This is just one video of a multi-part course where I overview different animation software to determine which software is best for you. This is a free course and you can gain access on tunefiles.com and I also have premium courses that go deeper as well. I hope you learned something and enjoy. When it comes to all the animation software currently on this list, I personally prefer Moho as my primary means of animation. And that is a personal preference. Just because I prefer to use Moho for my own cartoons doesn't mean it's the best software. It's simply the one I prefer. I like the way the tools work. And above all, it allows me to get in and build a workflow I am comfortable with. So let's discuss Moho a little bit and see if it's right for you. First, I would say Moho's main claim to fame is the bone system. Essentially, you can set up bone structures, and these are the blue structures you're seeing overlaid right now on this character. And this allows you to create grounded actions, as well as link bones together so it all connects in a realistic fashion. As an example, I have this rig set up, and if I were to come in and just use some tools here to move the bones around, you can see when I bend the upper torso and move it down, everything connected above will move along with it. The same goes for your arms or your legs. I can come down here and bend those, and everything works the way it should. And you can even bend the body up and down to create movements like this. And setting up a structure like this, once you understand the software, really doesn't take all that long. And that's one of the great things about it, is you can get in, you can rig up your characters, get everything linked, and the next thing you know, you have a character, and you're off and running, and you can start animating your own cartoon. So the other things that make this work are, for instance, the target bones. You can assign certain bones that act as anchors. So you can see these two bones on the ankles allow me to do things like this, where they will not move, and it will cause a reaction where it looks like his legs are bending, as we move the pelvis down. And in case if you're wondering, the pelvis bone is out here because it's sometimes easier to offset bones to make them work. And in this case, it would be harder to work with the pelvis right there, so that's why it's right here, just in case if you were curious about that. But target bones are a really nice feature and you can apply them to basically any bone you wish and you can turn them on and off. So if you wanted a character to be grabbing onto, let's say, a ledge, you could do that. And then later on, you don't want that ability. You want a more fluid movement like we have right now. You could go in and turn that off, and it will record on the timeline. And then you can turn it on and off however you see fit as you continue to animate out that rig. Along with your bones and these target bones, we have what are called smart bones. And that pertains also to your actions panel, which you can see right here. Essentially, when you set up and link your bones together, you may find that certain things won't work quite the way you want them to. And in many cases, this would be a major bummer, not being able to get this to work the way you want. But with smart actions or smart bones, you can go in to a certain action and specify how bones will react during a certain movement. So if you create an arm bend, and let's say the arm when bending distorts in a odd way, you can set up an action to correct itself while the arm bends. That way, whenever you have your character bend his arm in the cartoon, you won't have to go in each time he bends the arm and manually correct it. The smart action or the smart bone will take over and do it for you. This also pertains to creating controls for the character as well. You can see on this character we have blinks and a mouth switch, hand switches, even head turns that we can initiate if we want. This is all set up within the actions panel, creating what are called smart dials. Here you can then set up so that if you turn a dial one way, for instance, let's say you turn the blink dial to the left or right, the eyes will close, and in the opposite direction, the eyes will raise. And you can create interpolated animation with this as well, which really can 
help create a workflow that is quick and efficient once you get everything set up. And there's other nice things as well, such as the physics system. So if you want, you could set up some bones and put some physics on it. So if your head bobs up and down, you could have hair dangling, also react to that realistically. So you don't have to manually do that each and every time you animate things out. And of course, you can adjust the strength and different variables of that particular movement. So that way you can hone in on how you want the physics to react. In addition to the bones, which again is probably the biggest claim to fame, you have the design tools. And the design tools fall into two categories. You can design with vectors or images, also known as raster graphics. With vectors, I would say that Moho has an awesome range of tools. I really like the way the design tools work. You can go in and use different variants, one that's a freehand tool, one that's more point-based, so you can be more in control. You can use Bezier handles to correct certain curves. And there's just a whole lot here when it comes to choosing different designs that you would like to implement into a character, a prop, a background, whatever you want to design in Moho, you can do that. So I would say that is a benefit that Moho has is the way it works with vectors. Now, they recently introduced raster design tools. So you can import images or you can create images within the software itself and use tools to draw these raster based graphics. While it has seen some enhancements over the course of a few updates, it still really isn't something I would recommend someone jump in and use exclusively for character design or really for any sort of major design project. I feel the vector design tools are more well suited for this. And so that is one con or one downfall of Moho, I would say, out of everything I've said so far, is that the raster tools are just a little bit cumbersome and inaccurate, and they could be improved for sure. And if you want to design with rasters, you can design outside of the software in something like Photoshop or Procreate and even import Photoshop documents straight into Moho and rig up with images. And so if you are going to use Moho and you want to work with images, I would recommend that you have an outside image solution before diving into that design process. Jumping back to animation, when it comes to the bone system, you can also create reusable actions. You'll see we have our actions panel here and we have the ability to implement walk cycles, run cycles, and jumps just by clicking and choosing to copy or implement a reference. And you can see here, we can easily implement that action. And we went in and created this action ahead of time and it can be reused over and over and over. And you can jump out of these actions at any time by putting in another action, just like this. You can see we you just go from one to the other and it all works very seamlessly. And that is a great benefit. You can also set up a library. So if you have lots and lots of assets, you can link a library to Moho. So that way you have an easier time accessing those assets versus having to go to your file browser each time or choosing to import into Moho. Along the lines of animation is the frame by frame animation ability. And I can just create a new document and I'm just going to jump in and demonstrate this in a quick and simple way. But in Moho, you can create frame by frame animation by coming over to the layers and then choosing frame by frame. Here you can choose if you want to do vector or image based frame by frame animation. I'm just going to choose vector for this. And you can see here it creates this layer along with a vector layer underneath. And so here you could come in and we could just start with something simple. We'll just start with a ball, perhaps like this. And then you could come over here and add a frame. And you can see now it creates a blank frame. So you could then, if you wanted to, initiate onion skins. And then come in here and you could start then to use the onion skins as a way to do your frame by frame. So perhaps here we want the ball to squish in a little bit. And then we could add a frame 
and then maybe the ball is going to shoot up at a frame and then it goes more up like this and I'm doing this really quick again just sort of giving you an idea but as you can see if we go back through here and if we were to disable onion skins it's more apparent you can do a quick and dirty frame by frame layer and while this is nice it definitely is not a strong suit of moho's abilities moho was really designed first and foremost with the bone animation system and that's where it excels so if you're looking for puppet or bone based animation moho is an awesome choice if you're looking to do exclusively frame by frame animation or a big chunk of your workflow will focus on frame by frame animation there are better solutions out there but i just want to point out that it is there in case you go with moho and you want to work with frame by frame another benefit of moho since we just talked about kind of a downfall to moho with the frame by frame animation is the ability to work in a 3d space anytime you boot up a new document in moho you have the ability to go up and down and back and forth within that 3d space and here is just a quick example of this i'm just going to come in and reveal some layers here so show all layers we can see here we have an environment and as we put the camera into use you'll see that there's actually parallax occurring and all sorts of different 3d effects because the fence and the bush and the ground are actually 3d objects that were built in moho moho isn't designed for 3d modeling but you can do rudimentary effects and also import other 3d objects so obj files as an example are things you can import if you want to design let's say something in blender you could then import it here and then you could do something with the 2d elements with that 3d model and i actually do something like that in one of my courses here where we put together the production you can see here that we have these two 3d models and these again are actually th true 3d models that can be implemented and i'm not really sure what's going on there but that van and that ship are both 3d models and we work with that in one of those courses so the point is you can do that and I always work within the 3D space. So if you wanted to put, for instance, mountains in the background, you can actually push them into the background. So then when you use the camera, the mountains are not moving along the same speed as the character because you're creating true parallax within those foreground and background objects. Finally, I want to touch on the differences between Moho Pro and Debut. Here I'm on Smith Micro's official site where they list the differences and so we're just going to use their handy chart here to help us out so again there are two versions of moho the pro version which i believe is 400 dollars right here and then the debut version which is a lot cheaper and i actually don't know what the price is offhand for debut i want to say it's between 50 and 100 dollars. so it's quite a bit cheaper and you can see why as you start to break down the features really if you're using debut you're going to be lacking some core abilities such as the ability to export true hd files you can only export up to 900 by 900 in terms of pixel dimension and so that's not even 1080p that you can do as you can see with pro you can go rather high with that dimension if you wish the same goes for the maximum number of frames you're very much limited to only 3000 frames per file with debut with pro it's unlimited and then you have the 3d layer and object support which i just talked about before this you don't have that ability in debut and layer referencing is another thing where you can reference layers from other documents so if you wanted the ability to create a master design file you could then set that as a link to your scene file so if you make a change to the design file you can update that in the scene file without having to re-import and all that you can't do that at all within debut same goes for animating shape order or even doing a real-time media connection which means if you were to work with a psd file and if you were to let's say change an aspect of the psd file and save it 
Moho Pro will update that in real time while debut won't do anything with it. So those, I would say, are actually big features right there that you'd be lacking with debut. And then you have the other nice new features built into 13 that you just don't get at all, such as custom bitmap brushes. If you like to do the bitmap design, there's a lot of features left out of that in debut. And the new actions UI is really nice in version 13. Again, you're going to be lacking that. And just some of the other nice design features that they implemented are missing. But if you are on a budget or if you're just looking to, you know, get a feel for what this is all about, you don't want to invest $400, then maybe give debut a shot. And if you're looking for more features, you can upgrade to pro or get the 30 free day trial for pro, give it a shot and see if it's something that you want to invest in. Above all else, again, I prefer Moho over other animation software when it comes to primary animation. But again, I do favor the bone animation system. I'm not a frame by frame guy. <laughs> I just kind of lack that ability to, you know, get in and get that nice freehand look. But again, it comes down to personal preference. I prefer the tools. And if you're looking at this and you too also think you'd prefer the tools or the features built into Moho, I have several courses on Moho available, including how to design characters, how to rig and animate characters, how to design sets, even how to put together an entire Moho production. So you can check those out if you wish, if you're planning to give Moho a shot, which again, I do recommend, especially if you're new to animation. I really find that Moho probably has the easiest learning curve if you're really unfamiliar with the craft.